Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let's talk about Burt Reynolds. In the 70s and 80s, he was one of the biggest stars in the world. With big hits like Longest Yard, Deliverance, and Smokey and the Bandit, Burt was on top of the world. But then his attitude started making headlines. He would go through a messy divorce, get in fights on shows, even slap reporters on air. On top of that, he filed for bankruptcy because of bad investments and an extreme lifestyle. After a while, people stopped hiring him because they were fucking scared shitless of him. Sounds like a perfect guy to put next to a little kid. Yes, this was considered the low point in Burt Reynolds' career. A little kid wants to be a cop, so Officer Fuck the World is on the case to babysit him. The movie's so desperate, they couldn't even afford a Culkin. It's embarrassing, it's not funny. You want to see me suffer through it like the sick pigs that you are? Let's not waste any time. This is Cop and a Half. So as we hear the music to the opening credits, we can see that this is gonna be some campy, stupid shit. Listen to that, can it get any more corny than this? It's like the opening to a 1950s film strip. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Fonz himself directed the- ABANDON SHOP! CRITICS AND CRITICS FIRST! We open with our main character named Devin. He's a little boy who's totally obsessed with being a police officer, to a point where he plays it all the time with his friend. Freeze, dirtbag! Get out of here! I'm history! Uh, when did they combine high school and kindergarten class in the same building? Butler thinks hey, she's a real hey, cop! <laughs> put me down! That calls for payback! Put me down! And dude, Sam from Clarissa Explains It All is a bit of a dick, isn't he? At least now we know where he got the money to pay for that ladder. I meant it in the nicest way. Too bad! <laughs> so he gets his head dunked in a toilet and... somehow gets in trouble for it. Thus he's sent to the principal's office. Do I sense, uh... a little insolence? Lies are not explanations. I'm not lying. Every day these big jumbos come and take my money, they put me in the toilet, and hold me upside down. As you can see, Devin has been taking acting lessons that even the great Jake Lloyd would be jealous of. I have to call your grandmother. But on his way home, Devin comes across a chase scene with one of the city's most badass cops. Get your filthy butt off my car! Wow, he does a really good Norm Macdonald impression, doesn't he? It's a drop something with Daryl! Looks like drugs! It does? Looks more like my old mad scientist chemistry set. Holy shit, Doctor, we were making drugs? Why do you think I'm so manic all the time? That ain't mine. You know who I am? Um, don't you think you should cuff him by now? I mean, it just gives him ample opportunity to do that or that or that. Oh, yeah, now you get the idea. Hey, next time, why don't you read him his rights after he's executed? I want to tie it to the car, you see? Because I don't want you getting in my car. Okay, you ready? Uh, I don't think this is part of the script. I think this is Burt Reynolds just being Burt Reynolds. Daniel McKenna, you're not gonna do this! Not the freeway! <laughs> so Devin, who of course has no parents and lives with his grandma, has plenty of free time to notice one of the cars Reynolds was chasing and calls the police. Oh wait, I forgot. He is the police, so he goes to solve it himself. Look it, you're not Penny Gadget. She had a computer book and an IQ of gazillion. You had a bit part in Sisters. I don't think that's gonna get you very far. So he follows the bandits under the cover of dark blue filtered day for night when suddenly he comes across their crime boss. And I use that term very loosely. Well, I'm the type of guy that likes to roam around. Well, they call me the Wanderer. The Wanderer. Yeah, the Wanderer. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I roam around and round and round and round. Round and round and round and round. Hey, boss, you kill me. Yeah, boss, you are my yeah. idol, Mr. Fountain. Okay, which reaction should I go with here? Um, that one's pretty good. Uh, that one's not bad either. Now, I think for this one, I'm gonna go with number two. The what the truckload of Christ look. Yeah, this is the crime boss they follow. The head of this division's mafia. I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. It is Henry Winkler directing it, so I guess it figures they jumped the shark pretty fucking early in the game. Ooh. Joe, there's a fish in here. Get rid of it. You got it, boss. Hey, what are you doing? I never said a word to McKenna. Split splash. Taking a bath. Jesus, these schmucks are making the good feathers look legitimate. All about 
Saturday night. Bum, 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 bum. bum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Oh, hey. Megan, stop it. <laughs> Get him out of my face. Devin does see a henchman get murdered and writes down the license plate information. This means he's considered a witness by the police department. But there's just one little catch with that. You need me to testify and identify, right? Yes. I'd like to cut a deal. He wants to be a cop. That's right. He won't give the information unless they make him an official cop. No. Oh. Why don't you just go ahead and give us that plate number? Make me a cop. Why do you want to be a cop? Look at this guy. Raggedy ass clothes, bad back, bad marriage, bad attitude. Is he talking about the character or Burt Reynolds? There's a shipment of euphoria coming in. Where? Don't know. But I got a name. What's the name? I really want to give you this name. Mm -hmm. You put me on duty, it's yours. Now, in any other reality, I think we all know exactly how this would go down. I want to be a cop or you don't get any of the information you need! Okay, son, uh, why don't you come with me? Give me the name! Ow! Give me the name! Ow! Give me the name, you punk! I'll beat the shit out of you! Give me a name! Give me a name! Shire Baggins! Put a search out for Shire Baggins! But in this realm of retardation, we find that the police will make him a cop for a while, just so they can get the information. And on top of that, let's put the obvious last person they should on this assignment literally just for shits and giggles. You owe me. I don't owe you nothing. You I don't owe you nothing. Hey, if Clint Eastwood can act with an orangutan, you can act with a little boy! So then the mob boss finds out about the witness and decides to act. <sighs> right after he's done recording his album. Into your eyes. You're amazing. You really think so, huh? Why does it get the feeling he gets picked on at the annual mobster meetings? Well, they call me the Wanderer. The, the Wanderer. Yeah, the Wanderer. <laughs> oh, 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 around, 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 around. <laughs> so Reynolds and Devin are now a team. I'm gonna predict that this is hijinktacular. My shield, my badge. All right, here you are. I always wanted one of these. Get in a car. Die in a gang. This is you Detective Weather. Where, where are you? You give me no joy. Hey, I think that was the critical recommendation for the DVD. So they banter a bit. He acts annoying. He acts stupid. He thinks a purse is being stolen when really it's just a guy returning it to his wife. It's pretty fucking boring. Hell, there's even a fruit stand they don't knock over. How can you call yourself a 1990s buddy cop movie and not knock over the goddamn fruit stand? The one cliche you're supposed to follow and you fucked it up. Look at Reynolds. He's supposed to be acting in this scene. But you know, all he's thinking in his head is, God, I want to hit that fruit stand. God, I want to hit that fruit stand. Bam, bam, bam. We're just flying everywhere. But no, you totally missed it. Hand over your badge, movie. You're suspended. Give me the plate number. Play number N6B72G. Okay, so the kid finally gives him the license plate number as well as the name he heard called Bobo. It turns out the license plate is under a fake name, so all they have to go on is finding out who Bobo is. So, logically, the kid is of no use now. They can just drop him back home, right? Fuck that shit, we still got an hour left. He's staying around whether it makes any sense or not. Uh, this is a up. I'm listening to you. You're letting the kid answer the phone? What the fuck's wrong with this police station? Officer Butler here. What the cat look like? <laughs> Calm down. No, I'm eight. Hello? Yeah, no shit. I hang up too. What if there was a real emergency going on on the other line? Hello, Officer Butler speaking. Oh, 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 you say someone's trying to break into your house? Oh, you say the robber has a gun? Oh, you say he shot you in the ribs? Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, what does my husband will sue you for negligence mean? Guys? So they go looking for all the bobos in town. The first one is a crazy artist who's in his own little world. Detective Butler here. Is your name Bobo? Perfect. Listen, I don't think this is the guy. Again, I would much rather know the story of this guy rather than anyone else in the movie, but let's keep following our heroes. We see they find another Bobo who's getting thrown out of his apartment by his wife because he forgot their anniversary. Today, I don't know, feels like a Wednesday. I don't know. Tell me, Jack. 
Hey, come on, I'm a Danny DeVito decoy here. Don't make me do any more of my New York Italian stereotype. But Devin heads up there and sets everything straight with his unbelievable words of wisdom. You think it's bad you forgot an anniversary? It's not so bad. I have these big jumbos who always throws me in the toilet. You two at least have each other. Maybe right. Bobo, start up the stage. Oh, great, Devin Lama. Feed us more with your enlightenment. Hey, I'm from outer space. So Devin is dropped off at his home, but finds the mob bosses there posing as a school counselor to see if he recognizes him. You recognize me? No. You haven't seen me around school, huh? No. Devin doesn't let on at first, but he eventually figures out that it's him. He does the smart thing and calls the cops to let him know that he came by. So, what now? Put him and his grandma in the witness protection program? Well, how about giving Devin a sleepover with Burt Reynolds and keeping grandma in the exact same fucking location? No wonder they haven't solved this case yet! These cops are as logical as the justice system in Wonderland! Pickled beets! Oh. Take care of yourself, Devin. I will. On November 13th, Devin Butler was asked to remove himself from his place of residence. That request came from the half-assed police department. With nowhere else to go, he appeared at the home of Dick Cheese actor Burt Reynolds. Several years earlier, Burt's wife threw him out, requesting that he never return. Can two obnoxious personalities share an apartment without driving each other crazy? No badge, no law. <laughs> After more bickering and shit-ass dialogue, we see Reynolds hears a sound in the middle of the night. Shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him! Oh God, we could have ended the movie right there! decides he can't do this because, well, he's a fucking psycho with a gun. But the chief sees it different. Well, I guess the kid has gotten to you, huh? Give the kid to McPhail. He likes cornflakes in the morning. Aw, he bonded with him because he almost shot him. So another officer gets to look after the kid. One who will most assuredly treat him with much more responsibility than Reynolds did. Book him, Dano. Yes. License and registration, please, Mr. Fleming. What's going on here? Officer Butler has full jurisdiction here. Step by your car, please, sir. Oh yeah, this won't draw any attention to the kid at all. Nobody would ever find a little boy pulling over a grown man for speeding suspicious. Mm -hmm. My god, Dudley fucking do right would follow better protocol than these idiots. I trust my life to a donut before I put it in the hands of these fucking yokels. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, what are the chances of some of the henchmen stumbling across him while he's doing this? Well, guess what? Some of the henchmen stumble across him while he's doing this. Your tax dollars at their fuckest, people! Devin! Wait, what did he say? Devin! Yeah, somebody please help Debba! Be sure to let Debba know that he's in Debbie Big Chopper! <laughs> oh no, they were gonna miss anyway. That was just like Miami Vice. So it's decided that he should look after the boy, as Reynolds decides to do the safe thing again by bringing him on his assignments. If you haven't guessed yet, folks, I'm not blown away with the police work here. You Mr. Bobo? Ask your mother. Yeah, because I want to talk to you. He gets in a fight with the real Bobo guy when suddenly the kid has an idea to bail him out. This is the SWAT team commander. We have you surrounded. Throw down your weapon. The police are here. Really? The people honestly thought the little kid at the microphone was a cop? That's pretty dumb. I mean, what's next? A hostage negotiation handled by a three-year-old girl? Oh, I don't have a bit. I'm just asking. So the next day, Reynolds decides again that he's not qualified to look after the kid. I have no ping-pong balls that don't go back and forth as much as he does. Are you some kind of bonehead or what? I can't handle this anymore. I cannot handle it anymore. 
You call this being a father? <gasps> Which page are we on? Not your father? No. I am your father. I'm not your partner either. Fine. I don't want you to be my father. I don't want you to be my partner. I'm going to handle things myself. Ah, oh, Devin. Devin! Devin! Oh my god, he has a hard enough time saying the kid's name than Stallone does saying the word law. You betray the law! Law! Will you come? Devin! So, Deborah goes to the school playground where more hitmen try to get him. You know, because a public place like that certainly won't draw any attention to an assassination. All right, everybody, sit down! Where is Devin Butler? I'm Devin Butler. I'm Devin Butler. I'm Spartacus! I'm Spartacus. I'm Spartacus! I'm Devin Butler! I'm Devin Butler! Oh, I'm Brian! Who's oh, Brian? I'm Brian! Did this movie just invent the Twinkie cam? That needs to be seen more. But just when it looks like Debra escaped, it appears the kid is actually stupid enough to sneak inside their car and get caught. Your radio, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. No, no, again, that would make sense, but instead they just bring the kid to the crime boss, who then tells them that they can shoot him. Don't you think he would have told them to do that in the first place? Hey, Bobo, you're late. It's Burt Reynolds. It's Burt Reynolds. It's Burt Reynolds. Wait. He's half the size. He doesn't talk. It's Burt Reynolds. Oh, hey, it's Burt Reynolds. Oh. So he punches the thugs and rides the kid out on the bike. Or he walks right past the bike and entraps himself deeper inside the warehouse. I thought someone almost grew a brain cell there. Stay put. But then Reynolds suddenly realizes, Duh, I have a bike! And uses that to escape, right before stealing one of the gangster's boats. You're gonna jump the pipe! <laughs> so the gangsters decide they can do the exact same thing, do the exact same thing, and end up in a completely different location. A lot of fish. So the cops arrest the mob boss, and we end with Reynolds and Debra taking a boat ride with his grandma. This is the life. That was weak. And this movie is stupid. What else can you say but kill me? The little boy isn't very entertaining, Burt Reynolds always looks like he's ready for lunch, and the plot is every boring throwaway cliché from both kid films and cops films from the 1990s. It's a pile of ass on a pile of balls with a pile of dick. What's that make? A pile load of ass ball dick. Well, Mr. Director, what do you have to say for yourself? Hey. Hey. Fuck you. I'm the nostalgia critic, guy, remember? So you don't have to. Now the world don't move. God, I want to hit that first day. God, I want to hit that first day. God, I want to hit that first day.